Welcome compadres. Today we're going to do a decline curve analysis of a hydraulically fractured horizontal oil well using the reciprocal rate linear flow interpretation. So the well we've been working on this entire time it happens to be a hydraulically fractured horizontal well. So we need to apply decline curve analysis methods that work for those types of wells. And then um, once we step through the mechanics of that I'm actually going to show some real world case studies of some actual wells that exhibit that and there's several that do. So this is a good thing to learn if you don't know about it already. But essentially the whole premise of the analysis is similar to what we did in the natural gas series so you can go look at those videos to refresh yourself on that. But I'm going to just touch the theory just briefly here. Essentially what we're doing is we're splitting the flow into two flow regimes infinite acting linear flow where we assume that the B exponent is equal to 2 and then boundary dominated flow which the B exponent is going to fall between 0 and 1 so that's what we're going to do it's the same equations we used in the gas linear flow interpretation as shown here we use these equations where we derived using a B exponent of 2 from ARPS equations we essentially fit the early time region with this equation right here the infinite acting linear flow straight line and then once we applied solver it found the end of linear flow then we forecasted using boundary dominated flow regimes using just uh, standard ARPS equations as shown over here so if we go to a oil well you can see we exhibit the same trend and all we do in our equations because we're using ARPS equations we just substitute cumulative oil production in for cumulative gas production and we get the exact same equations and you can see we do see a linear flow region right here and then we forecast it with boundary dominated flow so that's what we're going to do today and if you're curious about how to uh, how it came about these equations you simply just plug in B equals to 2 into this ARPS equation right here and you can solve and get this straight line right here that we use in red right here and then di is simply going to be um, equal to this slope right here so you just I'm defining the slope as MRRC you can set that equal to di over qi squared and then solve for di you get this equation and then the time to the end of linear flow is simply achieved using these two equations and this equation from ARPS where you substitute B equal to 2. So essentially it's the same steps we used in the natural gas series so pause the video read through this these are the steps we're going to go through and uh, I'll see you in Excel in just a second. So we're going to go ahead and construct our reciprocal rate versus cumulative production plot for the same well data we've been using the past few videos so I've inserted a column here labeled RR that's short for reciprocal rate. So we're going to go ahead and do step number one and that is calculate our reciprocal rate and plot this. So it's simply just going to be our rate. Simply going to be one divided by our rate. We'll carry that down. And I've already pre-formatted this plot over here that's our data and you can see we plotted reciprocal rate as our y's and then cumulative production as our x values the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and fit our model on here so I wrote a VBA function for that it's called infinite acting linear to boundary dominated rate decline oil And the slope up here I just put in a random value intercept and you're going to want to freeze those net production to the So I'm going to carry this down. So we want to convert our model to a reciprocal rate plot. So we just take the reciprocal of our calculated rates from our model. And 
and there's our model. You can see that we have a linear portion representing linear flow, and then we have a transition to basically ARPS, where we see this curve. So in order to better visualize this, I'm just going to go ahead and plot another straight line representing our linear flow region. We're going to do that up here. So if you recall, our linear flow region, we're assuming it fits this equation right here with a b value equal to 2. So I'm just going to plot three points, 1 equal to 0, 1 equal to our net production to the end of linear flow, and then one way out far in, in, in uh, way out in advanced on the x-axis. So I'm just going to do um, 100,000 and then we'll calculate our rate using our linear straight line right here, a reciprocal rate. It's simply going to be, this represents our slope, MRRC, and this is our intercept, so don't get confused about that. So I wrote a VBA function for that. It's called reciprocal rate straight line, linear flow straight line oil right here. It's going to take our intercept, freeze that, our slope, and then our net production, which I've defined there. And I'm going to carry that down, and you can see we have our linear line. It's extrapolated out in time, and we have our end of linear flow defined by that triangle. And I'm actually going to extend this out one more zero, one order of magnitude. And so we have our linear portion right there that we're going to use to help us fit to the linear portion of this. So now we're going to go ahead and try to fit our data. And so in order to do that, we're going to manipulate our slope and our intercept. So it looks like our slope needs to come down a little bit. I'm just going to add a zero here. OK, that's a little too much. So I'm going to change that to maybe 4. Change our intercept a little bit. Maybe, let's see here. Come up a little bit higher. Maybe I'll just change our slope slightly. So this takes some work. That's why you're the petroleum engineer, right? So we'll go down a little bit on our uh, net production to the end of linear flow. Let's do 50,000. OK, we're starting to see a better trend. OK, so you can play with those numbers, but I'm just going to say that's close enough. And I'm going to use solver to essentially solve the remaining of it and give us the net production to the end of linear flow and be boundary dominated. And so how do I solve this? I'm just taking the errors between the the model rate and the data rate. So that's just all it is. It's a, it's a difference uh, in error measurement. It's going to take our essentially our actual data minus our calculated divided by our actual. It's going to take the absolute value of that. And I'm going to sum up all the errors as shown here. And if you look over here, in my sum of errors, I've excluded the first three points because really that's not really um, linear flow region. That's like flow back or, or skewed data. So I'm not going to include that. But I'm, I am going to include the rest. So you'll have to fiddle with that as you um, do your analysis with your wells. You'll have to ignore some data and also, um, you know, just mess with it until you get a reasonable answer. So we're going to go ahead and apply solver. So I'm going to go to data solver. So we're going to minimize our errors. So select our errors here. And then we're going to change 
We're going to use the net production to the end of linear flow and be boundary dominated as our design variables. And we're going to solve. And actually, I just want to look at the graph while I do this because sometimes you will get some errors. <laughs> so let's see what it does. So it changed it a little bit there. So we have um, essentially we we have that's the best fit, and that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to go with it for now. So the next thing we want to do is we want to determine our EUR and reserves. So how are we going to do that? So in order to do that, if we go to this graph over here. We're going to need some variables to do that. We're going to need our decline at the end of linear flow, and then our time to the end of linear flow, our rate to the end of linear flow. So we'll just walk through that. Essentially, I have the equations laid out right here. So we're going to calculate our di at the beginning of linear flow defined by this equation. So I'll run a VBA function for that. It's going to take our slope and our intercept. It's just this equation right here. And you'll see that this value is really high. This value doesn't really have any meaning. I wouldn't worry about it. It's the linear flow region. We fit an empirical model to it, a straight line that we see in a lot of horizontal wells. So this number doesn't really have any meaning. So don't think of it as a, a decline percentage. Um, we're just using an empirical fit here that we've seen uh, horizontal vertically fractured wells exhibit in the early uh, producing time. So we'll go ahead and we'll calculate our rate at this point and then our uh, nominal decline at this point so we can forecast. So our rate's simply going to be 1 divided by our reciprocal rate. And then we're going to calculate a time. So it's going to be essentially this equation right here. I wrote a VBA function for that. Time to the end of linear flow right there. It's going to take our slope, our intercept, and our net production to the end of linear flow. So we have our time there in months. And then we're going to calculate our initial decline at the beginning of boundary dominated flow or at the end of linear flow, however you want to phrase that. So I wrote a VBA function for that. It's, define, it's this exact equation right here. And so in order to find that, we're going to need, I'm sorry, it's called nominal decline. You're going to take our di that we calculated at the initial time, and then our b value is going to be 2, and then our time at the triangle is going to be that value. So that's going to be our decline percentage, and that's more reasonable value, right? 10%. So we have our values right there. We have everything we need to basically forecast. The remaining. So our QI is going to be equal to the initial rate or the rate at this triangle at the end of linear flow. Our DI is going to be our nominal decline, which we just calculated. And then our B value right here is going to be equal to our B boundary dominated right there. And then we can forecast. So I wrote using this equation right here, the VBA function is cumulative production. And it's going to take QI, DI, B boundary dominated, and then our economic rate, which in a different video we went through and calculated our economic rate right here. And so our net, 
So basically, we're going in our ARPS region, we're going to produce 57,122 barrels. So our net EUR is simply going to be, remember, we have our net production to the end of the linear flow right there, which we calculated from our linear portion, plus our forecasted portion in our ARPS region. So that's our EUR, and our reserves is simply going to be our EUR minus our net production up to this point in time. So this is our last data point in our production data. And so there it is, guys. We've essentially calculated our reserves and EUR using a reciprocal rate linear flow plot. And so if we compare it to our previous analysis, we get a slightly lower value. So in our cumulative forecast, we got 105,000 barrels. And then in our rate decline, we got even a little bit higher, 105,464 barrels. And then so in our linear flow, we're going to produce a net 103,671. So you can see this interpretation is more conservative than the other two and that makes sense because essentially we're looking at it we're dividing the the producing region into linear flow and boundary dominated so there we have it guys next thing I want to do is I want to show some case studies of other hydraulically fractured horizontal wells that way you can at least be comfortable with with why this was done so let's go look at those wells